Here we are, hitting up events, drinking our way through Chicago beer, and trying not to miss a thing. Yeah, because, you know, got a cork popped out, boom, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, all you have to do is add some fruit, stir it up, and ride that milkshake wave. Whenever I see him, I gotta take a photo with the most decorated brewer in Chicago, Jonathan Cutler. It'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Sometimes you want a small beer, but really, you want a big beer. You gotta take in all those big aromatic hops. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Waiting in line for a bottle release? You should have never been a fad. The black IPA is delicious. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. And if you're watching the video, it looks like we have a special guest on here. Uh, we got a, a Beer Buddies plushie sitting here at the table with us. I love it. He's got the little clock. <laughs> He's, got He's all little, holding his own oh, shit. little tiny beer. I didn't even see that part. Yeah. Yeah. It looks good. Yeah, did a little... Got a little test made of what it could look like. I feel like he's pretty big. Yeah. Is, would that be something? That's not something a dog would play with, though, right? If it squeaks, right? Yeah, I feel like it's a little too big for a dog. Yeah. Beer buddy's toy. This is one you curl up with in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect that. You need like a, a big one, like one of the body pillows. I think beer that buddies. would be fucking hilarious. That'd be a tall boy body pillow. Pillow, beer buddy. I'd be in that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's sitting at the table with us if you're watching the video. If not, I don't know, go look at the video. You don't have to watch it, but see what's at the table if you're just an audio listener. But we are drinking, as we usually do on the show. And I've reached back in the fridge and grabbed this hazy pitch that Nick and I got a while ago from uh, Revolution. It's holding up, man. This is the City Series, so I believe that's Fist City and uh, Hazy Pitch. Uh, I didn't get into this because it sat in the fridge because Nick kind of was like, it's not all that. It was fine, right? Like, I didn't get excited about it. Yeah. Um, I thought it was too fruity. You know, I don't really like little fruity-ass pale ales. But all that, all those fruity hops just kind of dialed back now. Now it's easy drinking. Now I, now I like it. Yeah, it's 5%. These were canned in December. Um, it's 5% hazy pale ale, it says. So maybe some of those hop, I don't know, some of those hops kind of mellowed out a little bit, but it's pretty refreshing and kind of nice. Yeah, I'm surprised it works like six months after we got it. Mm -hmm. So that says a lot about beer integrity right there, bud. And this was brewed for the uh, Chicago Fire. Yeah, they are the official craft brewery of the Chicago Fire. Um, yeah, they had this at the brewery, and we kind of skipped this and went with some, or not, they had this at the game, and we kind of skipped it and went with some other beers. So, uh, really? And, at and, the fire game? Yeah. They had oh, Daisy Cutter. They had Modelo. No, they had Liney. <laughs> Liney's got a lager. <laughs> so we didn't skip this because I hadn't tried it yet, and I was, I didn't want to get it at the stadium, not enjoy it, and then be disappointed. <laughs> but so now I've had it and now I know what I'm getting into and I can attest it's pretty damn good yeah you know um, Chicago White Sox used to have an official craft beer now their official craft beer is Lina Cooper but the Sox Golden Ale well technically wasn't a craft beer but it was that was damn good I mean in a fantastic can mm -hmm. art too do we know if Goose is going to come out with that is uh, just a Golden Ale offering I think they might just reassign it to the Blackhawks, the same beer. Is that what you heard or what you think? No, I, I saw a logo. I saw, I, mean, I saw artwork for a Goose Blackhawks beer. So what if it's like the exact same, you know what I'm saying? Mm, okay. Well, it, might, could, it might as well just be the exact same beer. I guess. They're like, we already have all this. <laughs> just, we know what this tastes like. Can we put a like. sticker on the cans that are already made? That's funny. Okay, that could be cool. But yeah, we're going to sip on this 5% Hazy Pale Ale. Talk about some of the things we hit up this past week. Nick, what'd you, what'd you get after? Man, um, cheers to uh, Dude Division Fest. Okay. Goose Island was there. Not much to report there. Walked through once with a uh, 312 Shandy. 
um, and then left. It was too many people for me. That's not my scene. Okay. Um, I do. I did go in the perch. I would. Learn, I wanted to enjoy some time at the perch. The the possible only Finch location you know, to exist now. The legendary Finch Beer Company. Yeah, <laughs> they were fucking uh, packed though. It's weird because there's a spot next door called uh, Man. I'm gonna butcher the name. Something about Sea and Vine. It's an Italian joint. Mm. Olive and Vine, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. It's next door to Finch, but Finch is completely packed. And this place, I don't know if it's like an expensive nighttime joint or whatever, but it was open and it was not packed. In fact, oh. it was quite empty. Damn. Was... And it was on and cracking at Finch. I was kind of surprised by that, the dynamic, you know. Okay. People just want to drink and get after it. You know, they want that taco cat. <laughs> All the taco cat. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the Finch is a gorgeous space, though. I can't lie. It's like, you the know. Perch, the perch. The perch. The, the, yeah. The, the Finch. <laughs> you know. Big vaulted ceilings, lots of sunlight, you know, very decorative, you know, things coming from the ceiling. It mm-hmm. looks cool. Yeah. You know, you stand at the front door and you look across the floor, you're like, man, this is a good looking spot, you know? So, totally. Not even mad at them. So, oh, but I did not drink there, Brad. Okay. Yeah. You just admired the space. Yeah. So I just wanted to shout them out since it is a brewery. Okay. Um, but a place I did drink at this week is uh, Chicago's newest brewery. On the deep north side, Rogers Park at Howard Street Brewing. Howard Street Brewing, okay. Yeah. Um, and how was how was it? So this is basically another. It's not technically Evanston, but it's in that same like ring. Across right? the street is Evanston. Yeah. So you're, you're on this side of your south side of the street. You're at Howard Park, Rogers Park, and you're on the same street. You walk across the street, and now you're in Evanston. Yeah. Yeah. So like that's how Peckish Pig is. Peckish Pig is on Howard, just maybe like the, I don't know four blocks down. And it's just across the street from the city, so. Packers Pay's still brewing their own beer, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not that all that, but. I think what we said to, because they did a collab with uh, Packers Pig, and I think yeah. what we said to them was like, I feel like beer is third fiddle over there behind the cocktails and the food, mm-hmm. you know. And they got this killer patio too, so it might be fourth fiddle. Packers had Packers. Packers Pig, okay. yeah. Where Howard Street is just kind of a no frills, like straight up beer bar. Okay. You know, they got a one barrel system, which is. Um, no, it's not something to hear about. One barrel system. And That's like a pot, like a chili pot. Exactly. It's like, um, you know, it's no taller than, you know, the, the fucking, uh, the, what do you call it? The, the four by four in Brad's office. Well, a, a keg is a half barrel. So. Oh, shit. So they, they're cranking out two kegs at a time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so they got a barrel system and then eight one barrel fermenters. This is the funniest shit. Yeah. It wasn't, man. <laughs> When we talked to Spiteful, mm-hmm. were they on, was the old system a three barrel? Yeah, because they were oh. in a space that was, um, I remember. Uh, or was it only one barrel? Was Jessica Murphy was saying how their space was only like, you know, less than 600 feet. Yeah. It was smaller than like an efficiency apartment, right. their original space. And it was a three barrel, not one barrel. I, I, one just seems really small, right? One is, I, I, it's, it doesn't seem, <laughs> it is small. I don't think you can get smaller, unless you, then you're homebrewing. Right? Uh, right, exactly, exactly. So they're cra- they're working the fuck out of this one barrel system because they got eight beers well, on draft. You'd have to, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, if anyone comes and drinks your beer, you're like gone. That's two kegs. That's true. Yeah, when you put it in those terms, right? Like, you know, it's not a big deal to blow a keg of beer, right? Like, as far as like in in pints, party. Like, you could have a house party and kill a keg. Yeah, that's just. You. So if anyone else came I mean, over, you're going through two kegs, and then <laughs> that's not very much beer. Um, pints in a keg. I always forget how many pints are in a keg. It's like sixty. Is it sixty-four? Well, a half barrel, fifteen gallons. You get one hundred twenty-four pints. Okay. So that's oh, a half so sixty-four barrel. and a no, it's thirty-two and a six. I forget the math. Yeah. So if you got a full a full barrel of beer. Would get you, if the math is right, 248 pints. Right. So you'd probably say maybe 220 because you're going to have some lost beer. You got about 220 pints out of this barrel. Yeah. <laughs> um, how much beer do you need, really, if you're a Howard Street Brewery? How much beer do you need? I don't know. Was it all great? Did you drink it all? I'm telling you, man. I had a... <laughs> you know, like a group of your friends, if like... You did like one of those party buses. Yes. You could roll up there and yeah. literally drink them Dreaming. out of beer. Yeah, yeah. And they, they could be out. They, they'd be like, ah, sorry, we're closed. <laughs> oh, man. 
It'd be funny. It'd be like a taqueria that just like literally ran out of tacos. Like, let's see if we can do this. Uh, How big is the space? It's not very big. Okay. Um, I, I can't put it in the square footage. I think the guys were saying, it's funny because one of the guys, one of his guys who was serving is um, a buddy of his that has like two local podcasts. He interviews local guys about just a whole myriad of stuff. And then this guy, and they both said like, yo, when we walked in here, we thought there's no way we could pull this off because the place is so small. Okay. You know, so I want to say less than 20 seats, right? And the bar takes up the majority of the room. And it's just every, pretty much just a, all uh, steel and concrete and uh, bright wood situation. Okay. So it's like very kind of minimalist, clean joint, you know. Um, I had a ginger wit. That was really good. Um, I had a mango sour IPA, okay. which was pretty good. Um, uh, I didn't like the Vienna lager. It was too sweet for me. You know, Vienna malts are sweeter anyway in a lager. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just don't like Vienna lagers. Why don't I just start there, you know? Um, what else? There was a porter that I liked. I tell you, man, every, pretty much everything I had, you know, I, I kind of liked. So I was, cool. I was impressed. Uh, did it feel like, I don't want to say like, did it feel like it was better than homebrew? But, you know, it's not homebrew, but right. I feel like that small of a system and being yeah. that new of a brewery. I thought, yeah, I, I, I thought the same thing, you know, because like you, like you said, we go to some places and you can kind of feel the newness in like the, you know, in their processes, right? Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't feel like they've been brewing for a long time or something. But I didn't get that feeling at all here. Okay. The beers were, I thought the beers were, you know, well carbonated and really good, you know. And I'm like, what do you put ginger? How do you do this ginger wheat thing? You know, you're using like a extract or real ginger. He's like, yeah, man, we just rip up a ton, a shitload of ginger and throw it in this, in this wit. That was, cool. and that was my favorite one. Kind of tastes like uh, like a little ginger hard candy a little bit. Mm -hmm. No, I thought it was great. So, this guy was saying that he hung out with Pete Crowley and Mike Jimmy. He shouted them out as far as like you know, hey, you know, just friends of his. And he got to watch the whole Haymarket thing take off. And cool. you know, he was kind of inspired by that. And you know, I, I was giving him shit because this is a guy who's the owner and the brewer. You know, and he was just like. I'm like, I've been hearing about this project because, you know, we live in Rogers Park. I've been hearing about this project for a year. Okay. But he was like, yeah, man, but it took three months to get uh, uh, get a meeting with the Department of Buildings during COVID to get the contract and shit. Oh, okay. You know, to get, the, uh, to get the approval for, you know, zoning or whatever they do. And then, you know, there were some issues with rebuilding the place. So, you know, the architect took longer than expected. Before you know it, you know, you're at a year delay. Right. You know? Okay. Yeah. Um, Howard Street is interesting, man, because this place is just like a few doors down from the Howard Street red line. But this building, the Howard Theater building, so it's like a real theater that back in its day held 2,000 people. So that's kind of like House of Blues numbers, right? Really? Like, that's a pretty big, like House of Blues, so it's like 3,000 people. Okay. So 2,000 people for like a movie theater is actually pretty big. But now it's all like businesses. Like I think there's like a beauty shop in the theater part. There's an actual small theater you know okay um like you know like what do you call it like a theater company that okay. does like uh shakespeare plays and shit like okay. that kind of theater hmm. and then there's a coffee shop so this guy bought the building and really wanted really wanted some cool shops in there so that when you go to the bathroom the um the factory theater which is the, the play company howard street brewing and the coffee shop all kind of share this share a corridor and they share a bunch of bathrooms Bathroom together. kind of thing okay yeah. So the guy that owns the building rents to all of them. And um, he was like, yeah, even during COVID, he wanted us to get off the ground. So he didn't even really sweat us about rent because he knew we weren't open. You know, he worked with us because he really wanted to see us win and get in here and build That's it. awesome. Okay. Yeah. That's so nice enough. That was, a, that was a good takeaway. Man, okay. I feel like when you took this picture, for some reason I thought um, we were talking about you going somewhere on the south side. And I was like, oh, I thought this was like way oh, like out way there. Way out south? Yeah. Yeah, no, it is. It's way up, way up it's north. It's way the other way, so, right? Uh -uh. So, what's that? Howard is 7,600 north. Okay. Pretty, well, shit, it's the edge of the city. It's the northernmost brewery in the city. Yeah. Damn. Okay. It's funny because we would say, living in Rogers Park, from how, from, uh, from, you know, Half Acre and Spiteful. So, what's that, Balmoral? Mm -hmm. All the way to the edge of the city, there were no breweries at all. So, you know, I think Half Acre and Spiteful were three and a half miles from us. And Peckish Pig is, like, at the corner. Okay, okay. <laughs> but we were like, but going to the corner and leaving the city, we don't like that feeling because you can feel yourself leaving the city even though it's closer. So we always said our, our closest brewery was 
havoc. Yeah. You know, so, okay. but now it's not. Now it's an actual Rogers Park brewery where you can walk to. So nice. So how close is that to? Can you do Package Big and Howard? Like in the yeah, like you, could. Okay. you could. You um, could. I'd say about five blocks. Okay. Yeah, something like that. And then Sketchbook is really not that far. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you brought up Sketchbook because um, they have a pale ale called Rogers Proud. And um, they said Sketchbook's been in, and Sketchbook has a one barrel system somewhere. Oh, shit, I'm guessing that's in Evanston. And um, Sketchbook is going to help them uh, contract brew the, uh, the Rogers Proud Pale Ale so that they can have it on draft at all the bars in Rogers Park. So they've been going to. From uh, Howard? Yes. Uh, so Howard Street Brewing can get on more bars because it's a one barrel system. Hey, that's a, okay. <laughs> They're going to contract brew at Sketchbook to get their beer on draft all throughout the neighborhood. I love the full circle of the contract, like brewing thing, because knowing that sketchbook is like, yeah, we're going into Skokie because we're contract brewing at Great Central. That's a pain in our ass. Yeah. We want to own this. Now we're going to contract <laughs> someone else's beer. Yeah. That um, they, I mean, that they, that, that I guess they're bros with, right? Like, you know, it's like, hey, we'll cool. do that for you. So, so that was cool. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up sketchbook. I almost forgot that part. Okay. Yeah, we got to get over to Sketchbook. Uh, talk to our buddy Sean Curry. He hasn't fact checked us in a while, so I feel like that's a plus for us. Yeah. But we got to get over there and uh, chat, and you know, just see what's up, see the new space some more. Even though we both have been there in Skokie. Yeah. But cheers to them, man, because they got a uh, collab with the Black Beer Baron on, and um, the name of it escapes me, but I know the can looked really cool. Um, okay. So, cheers to Sketchbook and Black Bear Baron. I'm curious to try. Where's our thing. collaboration with them? I mean, Sketchbook is way closer than fucking Black Lung or Emmett yeah, or you uh, know these other places, man. Yeah, Black Lung said they would do our Black IPA. I like Black Lung, you know, and I love their music scene. You know, I like their, I really like their lager. But then we gotta go to Black Lung. That's the yeah. Whatever, whatever it takes. You like to drive all over this <laughs> uh, state, so you can you can drive this time. <laughs> uh, I'll yeah. eat my Jamaican cookie and <laughs> and appreciate yeah, and appreciate when we're talking about cars, man. It's like yeah, so, <laughs> me and Brad like to drive the same type of car, barely. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, yeah, next time just you can drive out there since you're. Accustomed to driving <laughs> so much around the city. We'll see, man. <laughs> I'm gonna end up driving out there again. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Uh, so you did that. Anything else? Uh, cheers to uh, Eris. Popped in there for a bit. You know what I got when I went to? You know, it's my first time going inside of Eris and like sitting at the bar and fucking mm. having food and fucking beer. Yeah, the bars. Not, I feel like I like it. I lo- there's so much I like about Eris, and there's like little things I don't like, but. I'll let you tell your like. You know, this um, this lady I was sitting next to said, um, you know, I've been on the second floor because they did. Well, you were there. Yeah. We did the thing. The Friday night flights. Yeah, thing. yeah, on the second floor, um, and I was telling the bartender that, and they, they were like, it's actually this place actually has five floors. Damn. Okay. I didn't know that. No, I didn't. Know and that. a rooftop. Okay. So I'm kind of curious about if they get that together. It's just a really massive space. It was an old. Uh, I don't know, a mosque maybe or like a it's Korean Jewish, church. I thought it was a Jewish temple. Something. It was it was some kind of house Jewish of worship. Community center. Yeah. Something. Yeah. We got that all wrong. We said we said Jewish mosque, Korean church. <laughs> That's a Korean Jewish uh mosque um, church. Yeah. Of Latter day Saints. <laughs> no, we had no fucking idea. There's something religious though that went on in that joint. Um, <clears throat> I feel the presence. I feel the Holy Spirit when I go in there. It courses uh, through me. <laughs> man, they got a trophy case, man, Brad. I, I counted like seven or so, eight fucking trophies and, you know, like uh, med- medals. That they got or that they yeah. bought at Goodwill? No, man. Fucking uh, <laughs> beer and barbecue challenge, uh, GABF, uh, brew pub shootout, you know, okay. the, these kind of trophies, man. You know, so that was pretty impressive. Did you get the burger? Uh, I did not get the burger. I got a salad. I was, you know, thought I was being healthy. What are you, what are you Brad, going to Corridor <laughs> and getting a salad? I got the salad and an upside down the anniversary uh, a pineapple upside down cider. Okay. What's that called? Did they actually have beer on? <sighs> I can't read that stupid font. Uh, but it's their like anniversary yeah. cider. Did they have Pons? their own beer on? Because last time I was there, they were like, we're out of our beer. 
No, I got the pineapple upside down side. So you didn't even see it. I didn't even see any beer. Right? Like, what are they doing? Do they not have? Do they not brew anymore? That's wild. So it's just I. It's just Aris Cider House. Then if they're not brewing beer, right? I don't. I don't. I don't know what's happening. Maybe they got that one barrel and they're going through it real fast. (laughs) Uh, Very very busy situation on the outside. Outside really nice, full. Uh, Inside way chiller, way more chiller. Okay. Yeah, my comp- my complaint last time was that one there was no beer, and I felt like they haven't re-expanded their menu mm-hmm. since COVID. Like they pared it down to like just the essentials, and so I've gone there a couple times. I'm like, man, I've had everything, or okay. like, there's not a different thing on here I want, so it hasn't made me want to go back. Interesting. Although I like the burger. Yeah. I like the cauliflower. Uh, wings. I think as far as vegan uh, options go, I think it's one of the better um, vegan option brew pubs you have in the city. Okay. I like all those things, you know, the non-meat items. You, yeah. Your cheese curds, your cauliflower, like you said, salads, all that stuff's really good. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Um, any other stops for you? Um, man, that was it for me, man. You know, so. Okay. Uh, I didn't make it to any breweries, but I did make it to Mayfest. In right Lincoln, on. I in saw Lincoln this Square. Uh, on Western. I saw this. I wondered what it was. I saw the band setting up and, you know, all the yeah, traffic. Yeah, so Mayfest and Oktoberfest happen in Lincoln Square. They are literally the exact <laughs> same festival. I don't <laughs> necessarily know what the difference is to them. I know what the difference is on, like, a, like the actual festival kind of thing. But yeah, because I think... Well, May 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 Bach is typically a spring beer, right? Yeah, like welcoming spring, right? Yeah. And then the October ones are like harvest ale kind yeah. of things. I get that, but the event in Lincoln Square, it can be, it is the same thing <laughs> either time. Okay, you can wear your later hosen. I mean, I didn't wear my later hose because I got there and I totally forgot. I have later hose and I should have wore it. Yeah, why didn't you wear your later hose? Weren't you like I, a zombie? Uh, what were you? Yeah, I feel like you were like a zombie. Uh, I think I was going. I think I was going to be a zombie Oktoberfest person, right. and then I didn't put the makeup on because I was like, eh, I'll just be Oktoberfest <laughs> person. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I have the stuff, so I will have to wear it for Oktoberfest, but. I, I totally blanked because in my mind I didn't think Mayfest later hosen. I didn't think but. so either until um I well the the uh, beguile dovetail thing the, yeah, uh, the Mayfest anniversary. Mayfest anniversary. One of the guys was in. Gar- like I've also said, beguile's Mayfest anniversary and their Oktoberfest party are the same party. Same party. Two. Uh, I mean, you know, it makes sense. Slightly different beers, but the same. Yeah. Uh, which is fine. Mm. Uh, proper glassware, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so Mayfest in Lincoln Square. Uh, I, they, you do tickets for your beer. You could do big big pours or little pours. You can also bring your own steins. I didn't bring my, like, you can bring your own, like, legit German steins if you want. I didn't. I ended up just getting a little stein. And back in the day, I remember them having more options. Like they had Hoff to this last weekend, they had Hofbrau and PBR. Huh. I remember them having Hofbrau, another German beer, PBR, and then like Bud Light or, or something other macro beer. Yeah. So the fact that they only had two options this time was sort of surprising. Like it's you either, because they still listed it as. Import and domestic, like that's what it was listed at, and I was like, "Why don't you just call it Hofbrau and PBR on your price?" But that's because they used to have more, hmm. so that was weird. Uh, I went with the Hofbrau first, and then finished it off with a PBR because I didn't want to buy more tickets. I'm trying to think but, about I'm trying to think about Hofbrau and if it's something I've like had. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, nothing, nothing special. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Mayfest. Or Oktoberfest in Lincoln Square. It's a good time. They have bands playing. Lots of people just hanging out. You can get uh, sausages and pretzels. The sausage. You you ride your bike to this thing? I did. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice ride. 
and yeah, just had a couple little little steins and went on my way. It was a beautiful day. Just hanging out outside. Yeah. Uh, it's block party season, man. You know? That sounds more chill than fucking... Do division? Yeah. Do division spread out into the neighborhoods, which maybe it did before, but it used to just be on division. Yeah. But now it's like uh, on the whatever the side street is, uh, west of Damon on division, whatever that side street is, the next street, is like a kid zone. Oh. Fashion show and a kid zone that stretches like two blocks into the neighborhood, which was kind of impressive because now you know where all the kids are, so you're not running into a bunch of kids on the main strip. So I dug that part. Okay. Um, almost went into the old small bar, which is, uh, I think, like the uh, Indian joint the now, Indian right? Spot, yeah. yeah. Um, Queen Mary is over there. Mm-hmm. I think Queen Mary, she owns that building, right? Yeah. And then they got the cool Three Floyds, um, you know, like the old style swinging sign you see around yeah. town. They had the Three Floyds version of that. Great cocktails at Queen Mary. At Queen Mary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good to know. I haven't been to there. I haven't been to either. I haven't been to... Pub yeah. Royale or Queen Mary. Uh, the last time I was at Pub Royale was when we moved out of the neighborhood <clears throat> over there, and I felt like Pub Royale pre-COVID looked more interesting, and now it looks like small bar. It's kind of it's weird. Um, yeah. Just I think maybe how they laid out the tables or something, or had to change things up. I was trying to explain small bar to um, you know somebody at the party, and I was like, well, shit, I think. You know, to put it plain, it was like kind of a small bar. It was kind of a hop, I was going to say hop butcher, hop leaf-esque bar. It's like, you know, craft bar or map room-esque bar, where it wasn't on the same tier as those places, but it was kind of, you know, just craft spots were kind of sprinkled throughout the city. Yeah, there wasn't know. a lot of places to get a lot of craft beer, and that was a, des- a craft beer destination, and then the fact that they had soccer... It brought in like two groups of people there. Yeah, and then but there were now three. you can't open up just a craft beer bar and expect people to show up. because yeah. that's every bar. Yeah, and uh, this was pre, before it was normal. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's what made small bar special. And there were three of them. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Mayfest, but this weekend I am most excited for Midsummer Fest in Andersonville. Oh man, you know. Brad's all about this, these, uh, these May Fest, Midsummer Fest. Yeah, but this Andersonville one is my favorite. <laughs> I've been kicked out once. Oh, oh have you now? <laughs> <laughs> it's real hard to get kicked out of a street festival, but I have, I've done it. And they serve glug slushies. You know. Simon serves glug slushies. Not, not even Midsummer Fest. You have to go to Simon's right. and get it. I didn't know what the Glug Slushie was until you told me about it, I think. And then I had one, and then I had another, mm-hmm. and then I never forgot what that was about yeah. when I had I hope two. You, did you have three? I did not have three. Good. Two was, I, two was, I think two my... Two was it. Yeah, one, two is, was one is a good time. Two, you're ready to party. <laughs> three, you are getting kicked out of Mayfest. <laughs> That's how uh, I try to fall in that. One and a half, yeah. two zone. Because, you know, the Glug wine on its own is fine, right? You can get that at, a, what you call it, the thing that kept Chris Gilmore Market downtown. Right. And, and then Simon does it. And you can get them at Simon's, too. Uh, they do it. Uh, they usually tap it around uh, Thanksgiving. That's fine. I can, I usually try to, like, stick to two of those. But it's way smaller. Um, and you don't have the heat of the summer kind of, like, adding to the drunkenness that happens. Like, yeah. something with heat. And, I don't know, frozen drinks just makes your brain crazy. The Glug slushy is its own beast. Yeah. For sure. A whole different ballgame from the Glug And I, I think, I have not seen this, but someone has mentioned this, because I haven't been to Midsummer Fest in a while, that I think they do the white Glug slushies now, too. Really? There's so, a, I guess that's white wine? Yeah, there's a white wine version and a the normal red. red wine Glug. But I believe there's a white glug slushy that happens now okay so you know i might have to do both for the research I mean, you gotta get to the bottom of this you know probably it's cool in a cup too but the problem would be if you do both then you're like well the red was better i gotta have another one of those. and then you're three uh, you can't do it you need uh, to you need to go with <laughs> i guess you need to go with someone and you both get one of each and then you can decide after that midsummer fest is um 
so it's kind of Andersonville block party. Andersonville, more than any other neighborhood, is probably like small town USA, like Main Street. I think about that strip of Clark, and it feels like Main Street, right? Main Street and a small town. Yeah, like I would include like uh, Midsummer Fest is going to start after Foster there, so it's going to happen after Hopleaf, yeah. right kind of where Simons is, and, and go an acre and... all the way past the... Is it a jewel now, or maybe a Mariano's, or and whatever? There's the... a fucking uh, Parsons up there now too. Right, so it's gonna yeah. run most of that way. Oh, that'd be a good hang, man. Yeah. What's the weather gonna be, man? That'd be nice. So you should roll out. You know, get that bicycle in uh, '74. That's great. Oh. That's great. Glorious oh, luxury weather. Man. <laughs> I, think, I think you just sold me, but uh, I'm sure there'll be other. Beer sponsors there as well. I think um, the liquor store, there is a liquor store in there. And sometimes, oh, yeah. some of these festivals, like the rules have gotten very weird. Like some of the bars, will, like give you plastic cups. Like you can go into the bars and take them out. Yeah. Some of them, some neighborhoods don't let that happen. Uh, it's kind of, I feel like a gray area. Yeah. That happens, but I think Andersonville, a lot of the bars will just be like, "Here's a plastic cup." Same with Do Division might not have done that, but the one that happens on Milwaukee, uh, they were doing plastic cups, like when uh, the tap, not the the one with the digital beer boards. Tapster. Tap. It is called. It wasn't called. Oh no, you're talking about Links. Links. They yeah. just you could go in there and get like, uh, let me get a hazy pitch to go, and you could just grab it and go out. Speaking of plastic cups, I went to Ravinia this week, this weekend. But and I sat on the roof, cause you know I found the. Uh, remember we went for the launch and they gave us the little coin for the free beer. Yeah. I found that because you know. Oh, did it work? It worked. Huh. So I had that. I, so I sat on the patio. I think I have a sketchbook coin too. And I, but I didn't get a. I didn't get a cup. I didn't get a glass. I saw other people with glasses. Um, I think they may have run out of glasses. There were c- cups and glasses at different tables. It was there was no flow. Uh, it wasn't all cups or all glass. It was like a mix. Okay. So I got a cup, and I'm just like, I can't take that. I can't fucking take this pick. Okay. Yeah, but we're talking about plastic cups, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited. Street Fest season in Chicago is a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what I got coming up this weekend. I also know this weekend, this episode's going to come out after this, but uh, Solemn Oath, Oath Day is right happening. On. Ten years. Yeah, 10 years. I think they said they are going to have 25 different beers on okay. or available, and that doesn't even include city water is stuff. This, is this here, or is it out in Naperville? Or? Naperville. Okay. So they got way more space to party out there. Yeah. And plus, that's the OG spot. Okay. That's cool. Good for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's happening. What else is What else is going down? Oh, uh, well, we talked about, uh, you know, coming up next month, uh, we talked about Freedom Fest, talking okay. about beer festivals. Uh, Freedom Fest is the Revolution's new fest, so this is a two-day affair. Um, this will be on July 9th. Is it just so around Fourth of July? This is a two-session, one-day affair. Is what I meant to say. Sorry. It's a Freedom session, two-session. So it's a Freedom Fest about the session, Freedom Sessions. That's also two sessions. It's a two-session Freedom Freedom Fest session, Brad. Freedom Session <laughs> Fest. <laughs> You know, a uh, $40 ticket. Okay. Uh, there, Brad, there will be a whopping 15 Freedom variants, 10 of which are especially crafted for this festival. All right. So we're drinking out of our Freedom Session Sours. These are really some of my favorite cups. Yeah. I enjoy these cups a lot. And Nick brought this up that there was how many? 20? No, 15. There's, there's 15. And 15. 10, of them, 10 of them are just for this party. 10 of them new. And I wanted to see if I could guess. Right. Or... Uh, do I guess? Because we know the five, right? Well, do, do we? Do we know the we five? Have the mix, they, we, we have, have the mixed twelve pack, right? There's a blueberry, right? A berry? There's a berry. No. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I have no fucking idea. Uh, I think uh, raspberry, strawberry is definitely one. Okay. Lemonade, lemonade is probably the best one. Okay, yeah. Um, but the mixed, the mixed freedom pack. But I think what we want you to do is guess. The new guess one? At, yeah, guess at least two of the ten variants that will be on. Is there um, a cranberry? No. Damn. Is there is there a tangerine Man. or an orange? No. What? No, no there's no tangerine orange. 
But you know what? I'm going to go because I only see three. Mango. There's a mango. I only see three of them right now. Okay. So I'm going to go. It doesn't even have a full list. Right. Because the uh, the invite said, well, this is an example. Is of there a pawpaw? Paw? Oh, man. <laughs> That's a good guess. That's a very good guess. Freedom uh, Fest. Give me the, talk to me. Talk to me about the full lineup. The full lineup. That's what I, I feel see. like that's bad that we can't even remember the original five. So in, of the ten, they list one, two, three. That's not cool. Oh, yeah. so that's almost like a surprise. Yeah. I feel like a mango has to exist. Maybe a kiwi. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know where else you would go. There's some sort of citrus if it's tangerine or orange. I think you're on something with the pawpaw. But I'll tell you the ones that they tease you with. Ten just for this fest, including uh, Freedom Limeade, Freedom Strawberry Lemonade, Malort Barrel Age, Freedom Lemonade. Those are the ones they tease you with. Oh, so is their ten just going to be like our Freedom Lemonade but in a different barrel? Oh, it's like a riff on the original. Yeah, here's the one in Whiskey Hill barrels or here's the one in Whistle Pig barrels. It's like, I, I don't... Need a barrel aged freedom sour. Yeah, I hear you. I'd rather there just be different. Give me different flavors. Yeah, so I'm just looking up the freedom of expression series. We know series. strawberry lemon, isn't that the 312 flavors too? I mean, because, you know. Rather, it's not... like. <laughs> All right, so freedom of expression, strawberry rhubarb is one. Mm-hmm. Why are these so fucking hard to find? I should have done this in the pre show. Yeah. What freedom? Uh, freedom mixed mix pack rev. Strawberry rhubarb. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot about strawberry rhubarb. Okay, freedom variety pack. Let's go. Freedom of speech. That's the peach one. Freedom of press. Black currant. Uh, strawberry rhubarb. We talked about that. And then freedom of assembly. That's the blueberry and natural ginger extract one. Okay. And that's your freedom ha- session. And then we series. know there's the freedom of lemonade. I think it's called lemon. Yeah, is it called freedom of lemonade? I don't know. <laughs> the freedom of lemonade. What? So, uh, yeah, I feel like... Oh, stro- Frida's lemonade. Uh, kiwi. I feel like there has to be a mango. I think... A mango, you know, a mango is like such an easy thing. Like, you put mango in there. Uh, yeah, uh, mango. Pineapple. Like mango, beechwood, mango and pina. The beechwood pineapple from Temperance. Or beechwood pineapple. Beechwood blonde. That has pineapple in it. So you do a freedom sour pineapple? Yeah. That's money. That sounds delicious, actually. Um, I thought you had some with the pawpaw because Apolog, that's a local liqueur company. Okay. And they do a pawpaw liqueur, which is fucking lights out. And then I've had a Goose Clyborne beer that had pawpaw in it. I don't even know how you get pop. This is like a, a Michigan, Illinois fruit. That I've never a, even seen it. I haven't either. I've only had... Uh, booze beverages with this it This is like the urban legend I that... Mean, no one has ever said, hey, would you like to try this? Pop-pop. Here's the pop <laughs> like, the actual pop What does it look like? Is it spiky? Is it fuzzy? Is it have a skin? No one does fu- it, is it shape like a banana? Nobody fucking knows. And the thing, what they say, they all say the same thing about the pop is that it's sensitive, so like you gotta like use it right away. Yeah, talk nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then like you can't keep it, right? They just go bad really fast. So they, you gotta get them and then immediately fucking use them for your thing. But I thought you were onto something with the pawpaw. I think that's a good guess. Because that, that would be cool if there was an actual pawpaw freedom. And then, I don't know. I guess you could do like a weird like uh, like a kale, what? like cayenne one. Like, oh, a, like some, some fucking tree Like hugger. a green juice oh, yeah. kind of freedom sour. Oh, no? Uh, I'm trying to learn that one. But okay, that's a lot of freedom I'm interested to see what the lineup is, but I feel like we may be roped into just like, this is strawberry rhubarb in Malort barrels. This is strawberry rhubarb in yeah. whiskey pig barrels. I'm very curious. Uh, Run the Jewels is in Wisconsin that day. Okay. Yeah. I'm very curious about this party, though. Run the Jewels or the no, Freedom I'm, party? No, I'm very curious about the Freedom party. But it's on the same day as Run the Jewels, though. So. And you're going to that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. So I, I'll have to go <laughs> you scope gotta, this out. You got to hold down the fort, man. I, like, I guess I'll celebrate freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Okay. 
interesting. I'm I'm curious to know the flavors, but I do feel like it's going to be a ruse. Yeah, I, I, you know, we'll see. Because if you came up with other good variants, if it's pawpaw, if it's kiwi, something, you would just release them. Why would you? Yeah, if you're Rev, now I'm going back to the mix pack. If you're Rev, you know, they got a mix pack of four, and the ones they tease you with are all riffs on lemonade, except for the Freedom Limeade. The other yeah. ones were just different variants of lemonade. So if you're them, you might just riff off of these existing uh, ones because you want to bring pack. everyone back to yeah. the core. Yeah. You don't want to be like, here's Kiwi. It's the best one we've ever made. Uh-huh. Why can't I get this one? Yeah. So if you're them, right, that's probably what you do. But I do do think they need to do a – City Water did this with their, like, second um, – mix pack yeah. of flavors so I'm sure Rev needs to do a like uh, 2000 a 2020 lineup like oh this was the original here's the like wave 2 that we call I don't know citrus freedoms or something like that yeah I think it'd be good I like the price point of $40 I like the two sessions and the fact that's in the middle of the summer and this gets us closer to our dream festival of uh, kettle sour, seltzer, cider festival. That's the dream fest. I think that is where you want to be in the middle of summer. Oh, okay. this is I close to that. General, I was like, not in uh, general, but you know, like a nice <laughs> summer fest. Okay, that'd be time. a nice, that'd be a nice on summer. A boat. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly on a boat or on the lakefront. But, uh, but this gets you close to that. Just a freedom sour fest at okay. Rev. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's nice to you fuck around and try some BSOR. I'm sure they have it. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, okay. Um, so that's July 9th, right? July 9th. July yeah, 9th. that is right dead, dead summer, peak summer. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's nice. I'm just a month away from that now. Oh, shit. So, yeah, man, cool. It's going to suck. The older you get, man, this shit goes by so fast. It's already June. Um, yeah, someone mentioned, uh, it might have been you or someone else was like, oh, my kids are out of school. I was like, uh, yeah. what? School? Wait, school's out? Like, when? I was like, yeah. when did school start? <laughs> Yeah. All these kids in school all the time. I got to work all the time. You got kids. You got to be in school all the time. Got to get this kid in the summer program, man. What's this kid going to do? <laughs> Look up. This kid will be at fucking Freedom Fest. You're like, wait a second. <laughs> Damn. All right. Anything else happening or going on that we should mention? Man, I think that's it, Brad. Oh, cool. Uh, then I think that's going to do it for this episode or Heasy Pitch Freedom episode here. Nick, where can people find you? Get in touch when we're not here. Hey, man, I'm on Twitter at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter at BRAD, Chicago Beer Pass, Chicago Beer Pass, Twitter, Instagram, website, ChicagoBeerPass.com. Episodes are there. And we'll be back next week with another episode. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.